From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Al Davis, Johnny. We're on our way. What? Yeah, we're in Grand Junction now. We ought to be in Clinton in three hours. Renting a couple of cars. I brought help. I can use it, Al. There's been a murder here. What? Last night, a building inspector named Richard Hobbs staggered into my room, tried to tell me something, but died before he could get it out. He'd been shot three times. Now, look, you be careful. Don't do anything until we get there. That's an order. Yes, sir. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the United Adjustment Bureau, 418 West 61st Street, New York City. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Clinton matter. Expense account item 13, 60 cents breakfast. I had it sent up to my room. Right behind the bellhop appeared the tall figure of Sheriff Doherty. How about inviting me for a cup of coffee? Sure. Sit down. Help yourself, Sheriff. Uh, thank you. You know, you're a mighty lucky man. In what way? I was almost holding you for murder, boy. That hob fella. Oh, that, yeah. You're looking into it, I suppose. Yep. Yep, we're looking into it. I hesitate to ask, but are you getting anywhere? Uh, we figure he was shot sometime last night. Found his car downstairs all smeared up. Might have driven in from someplace. Where? We don't know. Well, do you know he blew town when the school fire broke out? We talked to Mrs. Hobbs. I talked to her myself. Yeah. Naturally, we want to find out everything we can about this matter. Now, Hobb came up here last night and died in this room of gunshots. Why do you suppose he came here? I never knew the man, Sheriff. I talked to someone who did know him once. She said he'd been a pretty decent man at one time. If you and Chief Hanley and Vickery didn't tell him to leave town when that fire broke out, he might have told me himself. His conscience might have hurt him about passing a building that never could have stood an inspection. Go on. He might have heard that I was in town investigating it. He might have gotten sick and tired of the cheap, rotten little schemes here in Clinton and come back to help me straighten it out. You don't think much of our town, do you? Not the way it is, Sheriff. And I don't think much of you. In that case, I'll just try to keep out of your way. Do that. You do the same, Dollar. Here. Two hours later, Al Davies and a contingent of special operatives arrived in Clinton. Toby O'Brien from Continental States Insurance. Rob Schwartz and the Minx Twins from Columbia Adjustment, giving us a friendly hand. Todd Weaver, who just finished a case with the Canadian Adjusters Limited. Lou Doniger and Thad Thomas from Chicago. A pretty imposing group of expert investigators. Well, Johnny, you look okay. Yeah, still in one piece. Hi, Thad, Lou. You want to get the door, Toby? Now, sit down there, Chuck. Now, this isn't any vacation trip, boys. We're all going to have to roll up our sleeves. All right, Johnny, you want to break it down? Yeah, all right. Well, this is a big one, fellas. If you'll all sit, I'll bring you up to date. Yeah, sure. Now, sit right there, Toby. Three days ago, I came here on a tip that building irregularities were suspected in the new school building. The man who tipped the insurance company was the janitor, name of Julian Osborne. I never talked to Osborne because he died in the fire that destroyed that building. I did talk to the man who designed the building. His name is David Baines. He claims none of his specifications were followed in the construction. So that's why it caught fire and went down so fast. His statement right here. Now, I talked to the school principal, Flory Hawkins. She supports Baines' statement. I wanted most of all to get a statement from the building inspector who passed the building, Richard Hobb. Hobb was murdered last night. Ah, no wonder you need help. All right, now, the sheriff, the fire chief, and the building contractor are all in on it. And there are too many leads for one man to follow, too many people for one man to talk to. The sheriff is making an investigation of Hobb's murder, but we'd better make our own. Now, you, Toby, and you, Thad, Hobb's your job. Find out everything about him, his bank account, his friends, his troubles, everything. Especially who killed him. His widow's Lucille Hobb. I met her last night. Leave it to him to find the woman. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now. Rob? Yeah? 
Your man is the building contractor, Roy Vickery. He's big and tough and shrewd, and he talks softly. He owns and runs the whole show, if I'm guessing right. Now, take Toby and run Vickery down. Bank accounts, purchase orders, what kind of money he spends, and so on. Jim and Alminx? Uh, All right, you two, find out everything you can about Julian Osborne, the janitor who was burned to death. I want Lou Doniger to stick close to Fire Chief Hanley. Same thing, everything and anything you can get on him. Al, you can handle Sheriff Doherty. The rest of you spread out. Start talking with anybody in town who might know anything. When you find one who's sick and tired of watching their town being run by a pack of hoodlums, send them up here to the room. We'll try to get statements from them making specific charges, Al. Yeah. I want to guarantee every one of them security. So take them down to Denver, give them protection until it's safe to walk the streets here. If that's necessary, I'll arrange it. It's necessary. All right, All right now report back to me any time you want. Don't push anybody around. Don't let anybody push you around. Okay, let's get to work. Eight strange men moving through Clinton, Colorado, asking questions were as conspicuous as I wanted them to be. I knew everybody in the little town would be hearing about them and watching them. And sooner or later, I hoped that would pay off. An hour went by before I got any action. Johnny Dollar. You the fellow with the insurance company? Yeah, that's right. Who's this? Never mind. You're taking a lot of chances around here. We're going to take lots more. Do you have anything to say? Yeah. Yeah. My name's Earl Kennedy. I'd like to talk to you. Name the place. You go down and stand in front of your hotel. I'll drive by and pick you up. I went down and stood in front of the Northern Hotel. Five minutes passed. Ten minutes. And then a car drove up. Two men in the front seat, three in the back. One of them leaned out. Dollar? Yeah. Come on, get in. Kennedy, construction foreman on the school. Hi. I thought you were going to be alone. Man next to you is Frank Ibsen. I'm the city editor of the Clinton Times. Those three boys in the back are Chuck Borden, Pete Geiger, and John Newton. They all work for me on the construction. Hi. Hi. We seen the guys you brought into town. Really? Some pretty heavy boys. You know, the town's a little edgy with all that's happened. The fire, the janitor getting burned murder of Dick Hobb. None of which were caused by any of my investigators. How long are they going to be in town? As long as they have to be. We're going to get to the bottom of all this. How many did you bring in? Eight. I'll bring in 80 if I have to. Aren't you talking kind of big? This is a big job. Yeah. This far enough? Turn in here. Now what? Just want to talk to you. Well... Yeah. We're all willing to make statements, Dollar. I can charge Vickery with shortchanging the city on materials. These guys in the back seat will tell you the same thing. They came to me to ask my advice. I told them to talk to you, see what kind of man you were. I'll print anything that's the truth. Well, that'd help a lot, Mr. Ripson. The paper's at your disposal, provided it's the truth. Fair enough. All of you be willing to testify? I am. Okay. Now, a couple of other things. First... About Richard Hobb. You tell him, Frank. Hobb had big ideas, and he played ball with Vickery and the rest of them. It also looks like he was murdered because he was going to try to make it right. Now, about Roy Vickery. He was born here in Clinton, brought up here. He's built about one-third of the structures in this town, every one of them standing today, every one except the school. Any angle on that? Your insurance, $200,000. Okay. Where can I get a copy of the actual purchase orders used in the building? From Vickery. But I don't think he'd let you have them, if he still got them. Well, he gave me specifications that look like forgeries. I want the real thing. I'll have to have the real thing. Well, let me look around. Now, when and where do we make the statements? Let's go over to my hotel room and do it right now. Better use the newspaper office. You're probably being watched by now, Mr. Dollar. Expense account item 14, $10, legal fees. Two hours later, I hired a notary to attest the sworn statements of Earl Kennedy, Frank Gibson, Charles Borden, Peter Geiger, and John Newton. They were damaging statements that would bear considerable weight in a courtroom. But they were not enough to bring the matter before a court. Al Davies was waiting for me when I got back to my hotel room. 
Hi. Hi. Come here. Mm, what is it? We've got friends. Yeah. One, two, three, four, seven. Mm-hmm. They've been gathering around the hotel now for the last hour or two. Any of the boys run into trouble yet? No, none they couldn't handle. This could be ticklish, though, Johnny. Huh? Well, if Doe's down there uh, provoked a, an open showdown. Yeah, that might be the idea. We aren't ready for anything like that yet. We're getting there. Come in. Well, hello, Sheriff. This is Mr. Davies, our chief inspector. Davies? Are you the man who brought these troublemakers into town? I brought eight assistants with me, Sheriff. They're troublemakers. They've been going around asking questions, upsetting folks, getting in the way. I'd hate to see any of them get hurt. Like with those out there on the street? Those men out there are a group of indignant citizens who came to see me in a body and protested this investigation and the way it's being handled. They look more like hired bully boys, Sheriff. I'm asking you and Mr. Davies to withdraw these men you have working in Clinton. I'm asking you to do that by sundown. Suppose we don't, Sheriff. Then you'll take the consequences. Now, wait a minute. What? I don't want to keep you in a state of suspense, Sheriff. We're willing to take the consequences. What? If that crew out there shoot as well as they look, they're pretty rough people to go up against. Let me tell you, every man in this investigation is armed. We won't be intimidated, shoved around, or bullied by you, those bums out there, or anyone in this town. Now, you tell that to Mr. Vickery and Chief Hanley. And then you go home and stand in front of a mirror, Sheriff, and tell it to yourself. You gave us till sundown to get out. I'm giving you until sundown to resign as sheriff. Now, if you don't do that, I'll see that you're forced out of office. Now, what do you think of that? You must feel mighty strong to talk like that. You see this, and this, 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 and this? These are all sworn statements from people in this town who aren't afraid of you and Vickery and the others. You'd be surprised how many other people around here are on the verge of making statements, on the verge of not being scared of you anymore. So where are we, Sheriff? I'm going to kill you. Not now, you aren't. Come on, get out of here. I'll kill you, Dollar. Now, here's our star to tell you about the final exciting episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, the end and the beginning of Clinton, Colorado. It all happens when the smoke clears. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by John Dawson, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs>